Earth's interior, has been focus of research, since ancient times. The hot lavas coming out from volcanoes, precious gems and metals, found in mines, and destructive earthquakes have made, the interior of Earth a fascinating place, that make us curious about it. Ancient Greece and Rome, recognized Earth's interior as home of the dead, and a region of fire, and sulfurous fumes. Ancient Indian texts, believe it is the lowest region on Earth, filled with jewels, but no sunlight. The European writers of 18th and 19th centuries, thought the Earth's interior contained caverns, filled with molten rock, water, or air. The popular Jules Verne's, Journey to the Center of the Earth, published in 1864 is one example. So, is all this true, about Earth's interior, or the reality is something different? What do geoscientists, know about it, and how do they obtain information, about Earth's interior, as it is very difficult to visit? What is Earth composed of, and how is temperature and pressure, at Earth's interior? What are Earth's major divisions? What is their composition, and how are they important? All these questions, will be addressed, in this video. First of all, what is the reality of Earth's interior, and what do geologists know about it, and, how do they obtain information, about the inaccessible parts of Earth, beneath the surface? There are many problems, in getting information, about Earth's interior. No such technology, is available which show, Earth's interior structure. Technologies like remote sensing, give information about, surface and subsurface levels. Though, drilling and digging is one option, but it is not possible, to dig or drill, very deep into Earth's surface. The deepest mine, in South Africa, goes only about, 3.5 kilometers, beneath the surface, the deepest drill hole, in northern Russia, is only 12 kilometers, below the surface. Crust, is the only region, about which, we have some knowledge, but that makes up less than 1%, of Earth's total volume. A direct look, at rocks of mantle, is possible, by basalt flows, by the intrusion of diamond-bearing kimberlite pipes, or the lower part of the oceanic lithosphere, at convergent plate boundary. Meteorites, give some insight, about the possible composition, of the core of Earth. Compared with, the 6,371 kilometers radius of the Earth, this makes it less than 0.2% of the way to the center, and is nothing more, than a pinprick. Geoscientists have been researching, for the past 200 years, to gain knowledge, about Earth's interior, and its layers. Geophysics is one branch of science, which has helped in understanding the interior of Earth, indirectly. Geophysics applies physical laws and principles, like the study of seismic waves, Earth's magnetic field, gravity, and heat flow, to study the interior of Earth. Using various evidences, laws and principles of geophysics, and research, Earth scientists have made some discoveries, about Earth, interior. From the mass of the Earth, and the velocity of seismic waves, researchers were able to calculate, the average density of rocks at different layers. When compared with rocks, found on the surface, it was discovered that the average density of Earth, is much more than the density of rocks on the surface. Thus, it was discovered that the interior of the Earth, is of much denser material than its outer layer. Earth consists mostly of elements, produced by fusion reactions, in stars and by supernova explosions. Only four elements, that is, iron, oxygen, silicon, and magnesium, make up 91.2% of the Earth's mass, the remaining 8.8% consists of the other 88 elements. The most common minerals, in the Earth are silica, which is a compound of silicon and oxygen. Silica gets mixed with other elements, and rocks in varying proportions, to form silicate minerals, and silicate rocks. Scientists distinguish four major classes of silicate rocks, based on the proportion of silica, to iron and magnesium. As the proportion of silica in a rock increases, the density decreases. In order from the greatest to least proportion of silica, to iron and magnesium, these classes are felsic, intermediate, mafic, and ultramafic. Thus, felsic rocks are less dense than mafic rocks. The four main rock types present in the Earth's interior are 1. Granite, a felsic rock with large grains, 2. Gabbro, a mafic rock with large grains, 3. Basalt, a mafic rock with small grains, and 4. Peridotite, an ultramafic rock with large grains. Mining engineers, geoscientists working in underground tunnels, are familiar that, as we go deeper into the Earth, the weight of overlying rock increases with depth, due to gravity. In solid rock, the pressure at a depth of 1 kilometer, is about 300 atmospheres. At the Earth's center, pressure probably reaches about 3,600,000 atmospheres. 
Similarly, temperature also increases with depth inside the Earth. For instance, miners working in deep mines experience high temperatures in mines, even in cold weather. The rate of change in temperature with depth is geothermal gradient. In the upper part of the crust, the geothermal gradient averages between 20 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius per kilometer. At greater depths, temperature increases by 10 degrees Celsius per kilometer or less. Thus, 35 kilometers below the surface of a continent, the temperature reaches 400 degrees Celsius to 700 degrees Celsius, and at the mantle core boundary is about 3,500 degrees Celsius. No one has ever directly measured the temperature at the Earth's center, but calculations suggest it may exceed 4,700 degrees Celsius, close to the Sun's surface temperature of 5,500 degrees Celsius. The evidence from geophysics suggests that Earth is like a hard-boiled egg, with three principal layers, a not-so-dense crust, like an eggshell, a denser solid mantle in the middle, like the egg white, and a very dense core, that is the yolk. However, there are still many questions, like, how thick and dense are the layers? What is the composition of Earth's layers? Further information about Earth's layers was gained through the study of earthquakes. Earthquakes generate shock waves, or sudden vibrations called seismic waves. These seismic waves can travel through the rock structures, outward from the focus or epicenter of earthquake. In the late 19th century, geoscientists learned that earthquake waves could travel through the Earth's interior from one side to the other. So, geoscientists realized that seismic waves may provide an insight about Earth's interior just as ultrasound. Laboratory measurements proved that earthquake waves travel at different speeds through different materials. Thus, by noticing depths at which speed suddenly changed, geoscientists discovered the margins between layers and sublayers. Now, Earth's interior is divided into three major layers, that is crust, mantle and core. And it is further subdivided as continental and oceanic crust, lithosphere, asthenosphere, upper mantle, lower mantle, outer and inner core. The crust is the topmost layer, it is our home and the source of all our resources. As the outermost layer of the lithosphere, Earth's crust forms the ocean floor in the continents. It is the only portion of the Earth about which scientists have direct knowledge, but it is extremely thin in comparison to the size of the planet, which is only about 1% of the Earth's overall structure and about 0.4% of Earth's mass. The thickness of the crust ranges from 8 to 70 kilometers and has a density of 2.7 to 3 grams per cubic centimeter. The density of crustal rocks is significantly lower than that of the core and mantle. However, within the crust there is a gradual increase in density with depth. It constitutes of a broad mixture of rock types that respond in diverse ways and at varying rates to surface processes. The crustal rocks are rigid and brittle, especially in the upper 10 to 15 kilometers. These rocks fractures, crumps, or warp on applied stress. Studies of seismic waves show that Earth's crust is not a homogeneous layer. The crust is thinner beneath the oceans than beneath the continents and that seismic waves travel faster in oceanic crust than in continental crust. Because of this velocity difference, it is assumed that there are different kinds of rock in both crust. Thus, Earth's crust is of two different types as oceanic and continental crust. The oceanic crust varies from 7 to 10 kilometers in the ocean basins. Studies from seismic waves and rock samples from the sea floor inform about its composition. At the top, there is a blanket of sediment of less than 1 km thick, which is composed of clay and tiny shells. This is followed by a layer of basalt, and then a layer of gabbro. Some geoscientists use the term mafic, rock high in magnesium and iron, for oceanic crust. It has a relatively homogeneous chemical composition. It is thinner, but is denser than continental crust. The density of oceanic crust is about 3 grams per cubic centimeter, whereas that of continental crust is 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. The rocks of the oceanic crust are younger, with the age of 180 million years or less. Continental crust is the main layer on Earth, exposed to the atmosphere. It is much thicker than oceanic crust, with an average thickness of 32 to 40 kilometers to as much as 70 kilometers, in some mountainous regions, such as the Andes, Rockies and Himalayas. In non-mountainous areas, continental crust is only about 30 kilometers thick. Continental rocks are about 4 billion years old. Seismic P waves travel more slowly through it, which shows that it is made of largely loose-grained granite rocks, high in silica, aluminum, potassium, calcium, and sodium. 
it is variable in composition, and contains other plutonic rocks like gneisses, and schists, with a top layer of sedimentary rocks. Some geoscientists use the term felsic, rocks high in feldspar and silicon, for continental crust. Seismic waves traveling between crust and mantle, records sudden change in the velocity, due to change of density of rock material. This layer is called the Mohorovicic discontinuity, pronounced as Mohorovicic, and, Moho, for short, it is named for the Yugoslavian seismologist, Andrija Mohorovicic, who first discovered its presence in 1909, by discovering the change in velocity of earthquake waves, dramatically, due to density difference between the mantle and crust. Later studies showed, that this change is found everywhere around our planet, at different depths at different locations. This is simply because, Moho runs deeper beneath continents than beneath oceans. The next layer after crust is the mantle, with width of approximately 2,900 kilometers. Though its width is about half to that of Earth, its outer location on the sphere, gives it 84% of the total volume, and about two-thirds of Earth's total mass, making it the largest of the four layers. Earthquake waves that pass through the mantle, indicate that it is almost solid rock material. It is also denser than the crust, with values ranging from 3.3 to 5.5 gram per cubic centimeter. The dominant rock type in the uppermost mantle is peridotite, which has more silicon oxides, magnesium and iron than found in crust. Peridotite is rare at the Earth's surface, but actually it is the most abundant rock in our planet. It was discovered that the earthquake wave velocity changes at a depth of 400 kilometers, and again at a depth of 660 kilometers in the mantle. This is due to change in rock density at these levels. Based on this observation, the scientists divided the mantle into two sublayers, that is, the upper mantle, down to a depth of 660 kilometers, and the lower mantle, from 660 kilometers down to 2,900 kilometers. The upper mantle extends from the crust mantle boundary, to depth of about 660 kilometers. It is approximately 420 kilometers thick. It can be divided into two different parts. The top portion of the upper mantle is part of the stiff lithosphere, and beneath that is the weaker asthenosphere. The two uppermost layers are most important in the upper mantle. The term lithosphere means sphere of rock, is also used sometimes to describe the entire solid earth. But here in context to the interior of the earth, the lithosphere is the term given to the entire crust, and uppermost mantle. It has an average thickness of about 100 kilometers but in some locations such as below the oldest portions of the continents it is more than 250 kilometers thick. It is the Earth's relatively cool, rigid and brittle outer shell, and it makes up the plates of plate tectonic theory. However, the entire lithosphere is not brittle solid, similar to rocks found on the surface. With increasing depth, the rocks of the lithosphere get hotter, and are more easily deformed. This is the beginning of the asthenosphere, which lies at the depth of about 100 to 250 kilometers. The term asthenosphere means weak sphere. Here, due to the heat of radioactive decay of material, and high pressure conditions, the rocks become, plastic. Meaning they lose their rigidity and can change shape without breaking. However there are some location of high temperature where this process occurs. So, these regions have less dense rock material, while the cooler regions are denser. As the rocks are now viscous, they flow in a convective manner, like water in a simmering pot. Warmer mantle being lighter flows upward, while cooler, denser mantle sinks. The material in the asthenosphere, flow both vertically and horizontally, dragging segments of the overlying, rigid lithosphere along with it. This flow takes place extremely slowly, at a rate of less than 15 cm a year. As, lithosphere is not attached to asthenosphere. So, the rigid and less dense lithosphere floats over asthenosphere. Earth scientists believe that the energy for tectonic forces, that break and deform Earth's crust, sometimes resulting in earthquakes, and often responsible for mountain building, comes from this movement. The lower mantle is about 2,230 km thick, from a depth of 660 km to 2,900 km, to the top of the core. Because of an increase in the pressure of the weight of the rock above, the mantle gradually strengthens with depth. The next and lowest layer of the Earth is the core, with radius of about 3,360 km, which is larger than the planet Mars. It has one-third of Earth's mass, and 15% of Earth's volume. Earth's core is under enormous pressure. Earth's core is made of metal, and not silicate rock. This metal is probably a mixture of iron and nickel, with a minor amount of oxygen, silicon, or sulfur. The choice of iron is the major component of the core, 
comes from looking at the composition of meteorites, as they are remains of the basic material that created our solar system. The existence of Earth's magnetic field also suggests a metallic core. Calculations show that the core must have a density of about 10 gram per cubic centimeter at the core mantle boundary, to 12 or 13 gram per cubic centimeter at the center of Earth. From the behavior of seismic waves, scientists have predicted the state of outer and inner core. During earthquakes, seismographs records that P waves travel through both outer and inner core, but S waves do not travel through the outer core. From this observation, scientists know that Earth's outer core is in molten state, while the inner core is solid. The behavior of seismic waves is also the basis to divide the core into two parts, the outer core, between 2,900 and 5,155 kilometers deep, and the inner core, from a depth of 5,155 kilometers down to the Earth's center at 6,371 kilometers. The outer core consists of liquid iron alloy. The iron alloy of the outer core can flow, and this flow generates Earth's magnetic field. The inner core is a solid iron alloy that may reach temperature of over 4,700 degrees Celsius. Even though it is hotter than the outer core, the inner core is solid, because it is deeper, and is subjected to even greater pressure.